people keep asking how much RAM should I buy for my new Mac? And in 2023, it is actually tougher and more important to get it right than ever before. Now we have made a ton of videos on this topic, doing tons of different tests, but they cover one specific Mac with two different amounts of RAM. So in this video, I'm gonna make the simplest, easiest to follow video to know exactly how much you need so you don't underbuy and have an underperforming Mac and you don't waste a ton of money, which is very easy to do, especially for the 16 inch, where you can spend up to $1,200 more just upgrading your RAM. Starting out with the M1 MacBook Air, which you can buy for 800 bucks right now on Amazon. We'll have all the links down below. I would say that if you're buying this machine, just buy the base model. One thing has to do with the really fast SSDs at the base that act as RAM when it's using swap to write to it. And all that really matters is that if you want a great budget machine, just pick it up and enjoy it. And if you're considering upgrading RAM, you should be buying the M2 MacBook Air or the M2 MacBook Pro, which perform the same in terms of RAM. These systems along with the M2 Mac Mini all come with eight gigs of RAM standard, which to be honest, I think should not be happening in 2023. Now, if you do simple usage, for example, web browsing, email, um, using iMessage through your Mac, things like that, this is gonna be just fine. But for everybody else out there that wants to use your MacBook for productivity, for example, photo editing, video editing, or anything else, we found that there are major differences in performance. For example, in Blender, 16 gigs of RAM was dramatically faster than eight gigs of RAM. And the same thing for photo editing, the 16 gig RAM was almost twice as fast. Now, if you remember back with older Intel MacBooks, you would spend two, $300 more to get 10, 15% more performance. But when can you upgrade to 16 gigs and get almost almost double, that is crazy. But what's even crazier is that if you're multitasking, the whole system can slow down a lot, which you guys may have noticed in the past. Things take seconds longer, sometimes four or five times longer to load up. And at times the M2 Air can actually be slower than that $800 M1 MacBook Air that I showed you. Now that is because the SSDs with the M2 chips are about half the speed. And if you don't have enough RAM, it will write that to the SSD. So if you care about any sort of productivity, I would spend that extra $200 it is money well spent for the M2 MacBook Air, M2 MacBook Pro, and the M2 Mac Mini. Now, before we move on to 24, 32, 64, and 96 gigs of RAM, if you already bought a Mac and it is slowing down, you have eight gigs of RAM, you need our sponsor's really useful app, Clean My Mac X, that can help clear up RAM and junk files. It's available on the App Store and was featured there as one of the best apps to tidy up your Mac. I've used so many Macs and this app is helpful on all of them, both old and new. Clean My Mac X can delete files quickly and automatically, including hidden leftover junk files. You can also update apps, scan and delete malware, clean up cache, monitor health, and much, much more. Their menu provides a ton of useful info, and if your Mac is slow, use the free up memory button with one click. I bought it three years ago because it is super powerful while having a simple app-like experience, including the assistant recommendations and the awesome lens tool that helped me find and delete a forgotten 55 gigabyte backup. Use the link in the description to try all of the features with a seven day free trial or buy it with our 25% off discount link in the description below for the next two weeks. Now the M2 Max also come with a 24 gigabyte option, but for most of you guys that need this video, I would not buy it because by the time you add some extra storage and you move up and click that, you're spending $1,900. And for that price, you can buy a 14 inch MacBook Pro uh, for less once it's discounted. And the only people that actually are benefited by that 24 gigs, and we made a dedicated video on this, 
is if you know you are gonna be running virtual machines. But once again, at that point, you would get better performance if you upgrade one step up. Now, Apple already plans out their steps to make sense and get you to spend more money. But one positive is that if you're gonna go with an M2 Pro, either a 14 inch MacBook Pro uh, or maybe a Mac mini, it automatically starts out with 16 gigs of RAM. And I have to say this, if you're buying a binned M2 Pro in either a 14 inch MacBook Pro or in a Mac mini that has a 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, it is not worth jumping up to 32 gigs of RAM unless you fit into a couple of categories because the way these systems work is that the RAM can be a limitation, but if your CPU or your graphics is a limitation first for a lot of compute tasks, then the RAM won't really help. So for most people, if you're gonna do that, you would wanna upgrade to the 12 core CPU, 19 core GPU, before you upgrade your RAM. And one issue with that is if you want a great deal, like for example, 1900 bucks on Amazon, the biggest discounts are for those pre-configured models. So you end up spending even more. Now there are a couple categories that might want to upgrade 32 gig, even with the base processor. And that is if you do music production with a ton of plugins that don't work well off of your SSD using swap, or you're running parallels, where you're running Windows and Mac at the same time, or other virtual machines, that is when it's worth spending that money. But most of you guys out there that do that already know this. Now, another benefit that comes in is video editing. And I'm not talking about simple projects. If you're somebody that's working with raw footage, or you're doing multi-camera, you have three, four camera angles, or projects that are 30 minutes long, an hour long, you have a lot of stuff open, that's when your system can bog down and 32 gigs will help. Now, what about if you're buying a 16 inch MacBook Pro and you're buying the most expensive $3,500 M2 Max option? Now that one with M2 Max will give you the ability to upgrade to 64 gigs of RAM and new this year, you can upgrade to 96 gigs of RAM, which is a $1,200 upgrade from 16 gig with the M2 Pro. I did a ton of testing and threw everything that I could from various programs, and the difference between 32 gigs and 64 is minuscule. Even running virtual machines parallels Windows 11 with performance tasks on both systems, the 32 gig model handled everything we threw at it. So in that case, who should buy 64 gigs of RAM? Well, some people have a lot of extra money, they want a future proof, so they'll do that. Or some people know that they are gonna do something very specific that's gonna use an insane amount of RAM and they don't wanna even worry about having issues. And in that case, with 96 gigs of RAM for another $400, who should spend that money? Well, if you're doing scientific research that's based on RAM, or you're running full-on orchestras and symphonies with tons of plugins that need that RAM, something extremely specific, maybe you will need it. Now, of course, with the Mac Pro, you can get up to one and a half terabytes of RAM. That's why they allow that option for people that need it. In that case, you know it. But if you're watching this video, I would say that 32 gigs of RAM has been great. That's what I do for my machines. And the whole 96 gig of RAM or, for example, 24 gigs of RAM, those high-end extra options, they are very rarely worth it for almost anybody. And other than the base 8 gig of RAM with the M2 chip, the rest of the lineup, for example, 16 gigs with M2 Pro or 32 gigs with M2 Max, that is the sweet spot for performance. So simple rule, don't get the highest end and um, don't get the base 8 gig and you are going to be great and spend your money elsewhere. So I hope that simplified it for you guys. If you have any other questions, ask it down in the comments section below. Click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.